Let's consider the time autocorrelation function and its relationship to the energy spectral density. So the correlation of a signal in time, gt, with the signal zt, we can say that we can define this as the cross correlation of psi gzt of tau. And if you have the correlation of the signal with itself, we'll call this the autocorrelation. So this, the correlation of the same signal is the autocorrelation, and this one is just psi g of tau. And you can define this as the integral from minus infinity to infinity of this quantity. Now, if you are going to do this, then you can also define this signal, this autocorrelation signal, in the time domain and the frequency domain. So you have the psi g of tau and then the uh, capital psi g in the frequency domain. And in the frequency domain, without going into the actual math, what you will find is that the psi g of f is equal to this g of f squared. And we've seen this before, right? This is this psi g. This is our energy spectral density. And so what we learn from this is that the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation of a signal is the energy spectral density of that signal. So another way to put this is if you have a signal, you perform the autocorrelation, then you take the Fourier transform, what you end up with is the energy spectral density of your original signal. So you have this relationship between autocorrelation and the energy spectral density. And just like the theorems we've seen before, this relates between time domain and frequency domain. You can think of this uh, furthermore, as if for an LTI system, if you have this classic LTI system with the input, output, and a transfer function h, we can consider it in time or frequency domain. If you are going to find the square of the output in the Fourier domain and the frequency domain, it's going to be equal to the square of the transfer function multiplied by the square of the input. Uh, therefore, we can make a relationship that the energy spectral density at the output is equal to the energy spectral density of the input multiplied by the square of the transfer function. So the uh, transfer function, whatever this is, this is a coefficient that multiplies the input and gives you the energy spectral density at the output. So the energy spectral density equals the input energy spectral density multiplied by this factor hf squared. And this is a important uh, feature of time domain signals. And the reason that we first discuss it here with the energy signal is that in the future, when we deal with power signals, uh, there are going to be some things that you can do with power signals using autocorrelation that uh, are quite difficult to do otherwise. And so the reason that we start here is that we're going to build from our understanding with the energy signals, and then later use our understanding of energy signals to help us understand how the power signals work.